Oh, hello, hello. What is up? It is your buddy, Matt. And today I am going to share the inside scoop on the Aladdin 3477 official trailer. It came out exactly one week ago today and already, oh my gosh, at like two days ago, it hit 200,000 views. As soon as it hit 300,000, before I could even uh, kind of send a message about that, Already, we are on the brink of 400,000 views. In fact, I bet by the time I'm done recording this video, uh, for sure, we will have passed 400K. Thank you guys so much. In addition, my YouTube channel has just crossed over 10,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful for that because most of my subscribers before, you know, were for Star Wars and the art and the You Can Draw Star Wars and the Matt's class and the cool tutorials and stuff, which is great. I'm super grateful. But uh, as I just crossed over 9,000 subscribers, I was kind of wondering, man, when I promote Aladdin, what's going to happen with that? Like, am I really going to get any new subscribers? And the answer is yes. And it's just awesome because as much as I enjoy the Star Wars and, of course, the art and the illustration, and I'm not giving up my day job or anything like that, but it's just been so amazing that everyone is on board with my project, my magnum opus. Some of you are probably wondering what I'm wearing. This is my modern-day Aladdin shirt. I found this on eBay. I apologize. I don't know who the artist is, but if you know, tag them, and I need to give them some credit. This is... Uh, I love it. It's He's... Uh, uh, Aladdin is tattooed up like me, and across his fingers, it says, hopeless, romantic, across his uh, fingers like that, uh, or his knuckles. Uh, anyway, I'm doing this live, so feel free to leave some comments, but with no further ado, let's break down the Aladdin 34 77 trailer. So much to talk about. Um, I'm glad everyone is digging the trailer. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to kind of go through a bunch of the shots and I wanted to chat about them and um, kind of give you the inside scoop. Uh, hey, what's going on the, from Twitch? Oh my gosh, I need help on Twitch. So uh, if you're on Twitch, please say hello. Also, I'm doing this live. So feel free to leave some comments uh, as we go through. If you guys have questions, Happy to chat about uh, any and all of this. So what I want to do, I wanted to talk. I don't want to reveal too much about what the trailer is because I want you guys to discover it when you see the film. And in fact, the way that I designed the trailer, I'm really happy with it because hopefully it doesn't um, ruin too much of the story. And I think that's kind of a it's a lost art these days where trailers are more about just selling tickets and getting people in the seats but then the trailer kind of shows the whole movie and then the audience walks out and says, man, I feel like I, I already knew the movie. Like I knew everything, like it was predictable, right? I knew everything that was going to happen. And I think a lot of times it's because the trailer shows too much or um, a lot of times, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times you go to see a comedy and the trailer looked so funny and then you walk out after the movie and you're like, yeah, all the funniest parts kind of were already in the trailer. Um, so I didn't want to do that. I wanted to uh, definitely leave a lot to be discovered. And uh, if you dig the trailer, you're definitely going to dig these films. The Kickstarter video was really cool because it showed kind of universally what these films are all about and how they were made. But the trailer really is indicative of what the movie looks like, what the movie sounds like, and definitely what these films feel like. Let's hop into some of these shots. All right. Um, so let me switch this up here so you guys can see a little more. No, you don't want to see that. You want to see this. Um, so this uh, shot was actually one of the very first shots that, uh, that I filmed for this. And I think this was 2011. Uh, this was filmed in Cambodia. It's a real monkey, and that's a real ancient, mysterious Hindu temple in the background. Um, and then I kitbashed those uh, those freighters uh, hovering in the sky. It's actually the same one. And this was back in the day, and I took uh, my buddy Sean Sarcona. I took his compositing and nuke class 
because back then I thought I was going to be able to do all the visual effects myself. And so I was trying to learn Nuke and boy, did I have a hard time with it. I'm a layers person. So I understand editing where you've got layers and stuff. As soon as it gets to nodes, my head just explodes and I just, I just can't get my head around it. I just don't understand how nodes work for some reason. Uh, that's me. A lot of cool stuff going on up here, but man, nodes <laughs> make no sense. But anyway, so um, yeah, there is no Abu per se in the movie, but you do see uh, some monkeys uh, here and there. They're all over the place in Asia. Uh, uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, next up, yes, real cobras. And um, I had the opportunity when I was in India, you might have seen a snippet of it where I had a cobra around my head and around my shoulders. And I'm actually terrified of snakes, definitely terrified of cobras. But when I was there and I had this opportunity to do it, I knew if I didn't, I'd be like the rest of my life telling people I had an opportunity to have a cobra around my neck. You know, did you do it? Well, no, I didn't do it, but I had the opportunity. You know, what kind of story is that? So, um, so I was proud that I did it. All right, Leanne Hua, this is played by Surya McNally, and uh, she's fantastic in this. The visual effects with the eye, she actually had uh, a, a contact lens to make her eye a different color, but you don't really notice it as much, and I definitely wanted her to be kind of this cyborg character, and so all of the, the visual effects added there was done by Sean Sheehan, who is the visual effects supervisor on the film. Uh, just fantastic work. Um, here is a shot of the Taj Mahal. And this is this particular shot is supposed to take place in India here, but actually this shot I filmed in Shanghai, but I just really like the look of this building and it just kind of fit the vibe for uh, this establishing shot for the scene. Of course, the lovely Princess Kamala, portrayed by Christy Perovsky. And this is actually in my backyard, which we ended up kind of destroying later, building the Hong Kong sets. But I used to have this beautiful, I still have it, it's still beautiful, but I have this Japanese, and it, this wasn't built for the films, but I had this Japanese rock garden with uh, koi pond and waterfall and stuff, but specifically for the film, because I wanted a really cool shot like this. I really envisioned like this wall of cascading water going behind her. And originally the waterfall behind her was only about halfway up to about where the top of her head is. So for the film actually built the wall up and, and lifted the uh, waterfall uh, a few feet higher. Uh, so we did it for the film, but now it's kind of cool because in my backyard, there's this you know huge cascading waterfall that goes into the koi pond. Uh, next up, we've got Aladdin, and we've got Fiji walking through. In the background, you can see uh, James Polony uh, as an extra. Uh, there's Kasawa, John Ziski's in the background, and uh, actually producer Lindsay uh, is the uh, girl, the marketplace. Uh, she's selling some kind of little trinkets down there. Uh, pointing at Aladdin. And for those of you curious, I bet a lot of people are wondering, because you know, a lot of times in movies, it's fake when people get punched or when people get slapped. For anyone wondering if uh, Eric Steele, who plays Aladdin, if you were ever wondering if he actually does his own stunts, did he actually get slapped there? Th this almost looks fake. But this is a this is a screenshot from that slap. Yes, he got whacked. You can see his lips just like. And uh, true story. One of the reasons that really kind of set me over the edge with just really being locked on Eric playing Aladdin. He really is Aladdin and he's he's not a thief. He doesn't steal anything. Um, but uh, one of the things that I thought was amazing is prior to. Um, casting any of this, uh, Eric, uh, he actually runs a studio in Utica, Michigan. He's a filmmaker himself, you know, doing commercials and music videos and short films. And he's actually the uh, co-founder of the horror film Roulette uh, Film Festival, which is really cool, happens around Halloween every year. But he had this video where he and his buddies, I think they were testing perhaps a red camera 
and they were testing like, I don't know, something ridiculous, like 260 frames per second. And so they needed something really fast that they uh, just for a test. And so Eric agreed to be slapped across the face so they could play it in slow motion. And he just got cracked across the face and he did it just for the sake of like experimenting with this camera. And it was captured on, you know, not on film, but on, you know, digital data. And it was just so amazing. And it just, it really spoke volumes to me that uh, Eric is in it to win it. And definitely with these films, Eric gets dragged around. He gets kicked through the mud. He's, um, he's one of several underdogs in this movie. And he, um, he was just in it to win it, man. He was, uh, he was fantastic. Um, and, uh, of course here he is talking to, uh, Jolly, uh, who is played by Cassidy failing. Fantastic. Uh, Fiji, of course, in the mix and, uh, you and your stupid Radiohead robot, right? Um, with this old Sony and I forget the, the model. Um, but, uh, but I actually had one of these in the uh, early 2000s um, that I had at school and then it got stolen, but acquired another one uh, for Fiji. So here is Harshad, Aladdin and Fiji trekking through the Venkata Desert. Why are they trekking through the Venkata Desert? You can probably have a pretty good guess. This is the Darshana Shailaja, and a lot of people asking about this. A lot of people asking if this is the Jinn of Wisdom. This is not the Jinn of Wisdom. And again, you know, with the movie trailer, one of the things that I really wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys a lot. I want to make it intriguing, but there are full-on characters that you haven't even seen yet that I, um, I just want you guys to discover through the film. And there's uh, some characters that you see a little bit, but I just, I want to keep some mystery alive so that you really enjoy these films. These, uh, it's a pulse pounding adventure and it's so much bigger than the Aladdin that you know. Um, it's got a lot of the magic moments that you would expect throughout this trilogy from the Aladdin tale. Um, but actually it's very different. The original Aladdin tale is so much different than the Disney version. And my version is different as well. Um, but uh, I think you guys are going to dig it. This is the Darshana Shailaja, and she's uh, got six arms and kind of looks like a Hindu deity, right? Like Shiva or something like that. This was the most complex character that we had to film because this character was part actress, part puppeteering, part green screen, part remote control, part lighting, and all kind of happening at once, working together. Then on top of that, um, the green screen that we filmed was actually really difficult because we have these really powerful amber lights that are casting on the Darshana. And for some of the shots, for the arms, we had to have green screens in there. Well, we couldn't change the lighting and there wasn't as much room in this little uh, temple area behind the Darshana. So the green screen that we had had the same color the amber color on the screen. So it made the keying really difficult. So a lot of the magic that you're seeing here was pain painstakingly uh, composited and cut out uh, frame by frame by Sean Sheehan and did just a fantastic job uh, cleaning this up. Faux show. This is a close up look at the Taj Mahal, which floats in the sky and it can travel from city to city, in 10 cities, in 10 cities. Hey, you guys are welcome to leave comments. I see that uh, some people are watching along. Um, feel free to leave some comments. And um, this is just an impromptu live trailer breakdown. This is Sydney Solomon, and uh, Sydney's fantastic. In the background, you can see Cam Turner and Bill Kolkowski. Uh, that are playing some royal dignitaries aboard the Taj Mahal. So true story with Sydney. We tried our best to get a lot of authentic flavor into these films, and we had casting calls. But even though, uh, and we filmed this in the kind of metropolitan Detroit area, and we've got a pretty good melting pot here, but we didn't have a lot of authentic um, Indian 
candidates that were um, that were going for roles. So literally myself and producer Lindsay, we would be walking down the street and we would see people that would have an interesting look that looked like, you know, they might be uh, either Pakistani or Indian. And we would pull people aside and say, hey, I know you think we're weird. We have this movie. Will you please come and read for it? Or have you ever wanted to be in a movie? Most people thought we were weird and kind of, uh, I don't know. So true story, at the time, Sydney was uh, working at uh, a restaurant. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but he was uh, he was our waiter at Buffalo Wild Wings. And he was so charming. He was so funny. And so at some point, I pulled him aside and I said, listen, you don't understand. We are We were already filming. And we were actually there celebrating uh, Ghost, Alex Jacobson. Uh, it was his birthday, and we were celebrating that. And I pulled him aside. I said, we are making a film. And I could tell at first he was kind of like, yeah, yeah, sure you are. Okay. And I said, no, here's the website. Here's my card. Thankfully, he gave me his information, and I hounded him, and he agreed to be in it. And Sidney Solomon is fantastic in these films. He plays a character named Vishal. Uh You'll definitely see him in the first film, but his character uh, has a lot more in store for this story in the second and third films as well. Here is my buddy Mo, and in the background, you can see Andy Bako and Patrick Nordstrom, and uh, uh, this is the Grand Vizier, um, and you might have been expecting something else for the Grand Vizier, but... Uh, this is it, and the character's name is Chatan, and you are going to meet Chatan in The Gin of Wisdom. Uh, by the way, this Taj Mahal set took us, I believe, a year and three months to build the just the throne room, and we have other rooms and corridors that we had to build after we built the uh, this throne room, but a year and three months. Now, we were filming other stuff during this time as well. We had some outdoor shots and some other things that we were able to do elsewhere, but this completely consumed the inside of our, we had kind of a giant industrial warehouse that we converted into a soundstage. This isn't even the biggest set, the biggest indoor set that we built, but this is probably one of the most impressive ones. And, uh, took a long time and uh, to try to get it nice and symmetrical and uh, pristine. And of course, we have Sultan Shivali. And of course, this is the wonderful Jerry Hayes. And we've got Haley Ambrosio on one side playing Mistress A. And we've got Haley DeCost on the other side playing Mistress D. So some of you might be wondering, wait, Mistress A, Mistress D... What happened to Mistress B and Mistress C? We don't talk about Mistress B and Mistress C. Uh, moving on. So this is the lovely Christy Perovsky, uh, who is playing Princess Kamala, the princess of India. And here she is uh, relaxing in Lian Hua's spa. And of course, we've got Lian Hua again, Saria McNally, and just the awesome, incredible... Uh, visual effects by Sean Sheehan ju that just knocked it out of the park with um, with this light up eye, just uh, just fantastic. Uh, we've got the awesome montage scene, and this is uh, this was so fun to film with uh, Christy. It was actually really kind of difficult because it's all these shots, and you saw a bunch of them. There's a lot more. It's it's a little bit bigger of a montage in the film. Uh, and why this montage is happening. But it's so funny because even for something like this, pulling up a hood, you have to do it like 20 times just to get it right because sometimes you'll do it really quick and a piece of hair like flies in front of your face. Okay, let's not do it. Let's try it again. And everything has to land just right. Or something where like just a hand comes out of a sleeve. Sometimes the hand shoots over too far. No, we got to have it back here. And then like maybe the hand was too high. So it's actually really difficult. And sometimes it's the camera. Like we can just move the camera to a different place. But all of those mini shots that just uh, fly and kind of make everything snappy, they're actually kind of hard to put together. And of course, uh, this montage 
for me was inspired by the work of Edgar Wright. You're probably familiar with his films like Baby Driver and Shaun of the Dead. And of course, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Amazing, amazing film. So this is Fiji and Aladdin. And in the background, I think you see James Polony over his shoulder. And I believe that's Lindsay actually as well. Um, it's got you know this giant hood that's kind of tied around her face. Um, this was filmed at the historic Packard plant, which is almost like this giant metropolis that uh, that's been deserted and it's crumbling down. It is one of the most incredible locations that we were able to film in. And they've actually filmed a lot of movies here. They filmed a bunch of the Transformers movies, uh, Batman v Superman. And I think it's getting torn down now, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, or maybe it's a good thing because it's in the middle of Detroit and it's uh, it's not pretty, but in a way it is. A lot of people are into what's called urban porn. And uh, so there are people that pay money to kind of go on the premises and just take photos. There's a lot of graffiti and decay and everything. And um uh, it wasn't cheap, but uh, we were very fortunate to be able to film at the uh, historic Packard plant. It's just huge and just endless corridors. And it was extremely dangerous. And we had uh, fight scenes in there, uh, not really in the first film with the fight scenes at the Packard plant. But, you know, there are parts where there are floors that just cave through and drop to the next floor, to the next floor, to the next floor. And, uh, you know, we all had to sign, obviously, crazy releases. We had to get a, um, what's it called? We had to get an insurance policy, a million dollar insurance policy um, for us to be able to film there. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, this also uh, filmed at the Packard plant, but then there is some of my handiwork, kit bashing this. Uh, it's not the Taj Mahal, obviously, but it's another kind of elite um, uh, kind of miniature city floating in the sky for people that can afford not to live uh, on the gross ground. Who would want to live on the ground, right? Uh, this here, I don't want to reveal too much of what this is, but this is not CGI. This is an actual place uh, on the planet Earth, believe it or not. Um, so very lucky to have this in the film. And um, I think that's one of the things that kind of sets the look of these films that I think people um, will really dig. And that is that um, there isn't a lot of CGI in these films. A, a lot of what you see is real. And um, not that they're perfect films. And there is a quirkiness sometimes to the visual effects and to the, um, you know, the miniatures and using forced perspective and the puppeteering of robots and stuff. But uh but I think it's got a, uh, I think it's just got a, a unique look. And so far with the trailer, everyone seems to be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty happy with it. I want to go to some comments real quick, just because we got some and feel free to leave some more. We've got Christy Perovsky, Christy Dumart, who says, woot, woot. And of course she plays the wonderful princess of India. Chantel says, wow, that's amazing. I know. Isn't that so cool? The, uh, this location, and I can't wait for you to see exactly what this is in the Gin of Wisdom. Here is Lochan Shyamal. So this is the big baddie for the entire trilogy. There are a lot of adversaries. There's a lot of, man, there's a lot that Aladdin and Aladdin's friends have to go through uh, during this, uh, this epic saga. But there is one main villain, and that is Lochan Shyamal. And this is uh, this is Lochan in all of his diabolical glory, uh, portrayed by um, Brian Dalling. And it's hard to tell in this photo, but Brian Dalling is actually suspended in the air here. Um, for this particular shot, he might be standing on a ladder, uh, to tell you the truth. But for the faraway shots, he's actually hanging on cables, and he's wearing a harness. And he's just dangling in midair as he kind of controls the nano net and all of these slag warriors that are doing his bidding. Um, but he was just fantastic, such a trooper uh, through all of it. So the cool thing about these films is you really get to see Lochan's rise to power kind of throughout the trilogy. 
and uh, he is diabolical faux shizzle. So this is a shot of a sky sail flying into Kong Chiam, Thailand. And the cool thing about Kong Chiam, so there's a lot of different cities and a lot of different world, I should say, not really worlds because it all takes place on planet Earth. But um, I wanted to have each city kind of have its own flavor. This is a global adventure that takes place across Asia and India. So the cool thing about Kong Chiam in Thailand, at least in my version of uh, Kong Chiam in the future, is that Kong Chiam is this bustling metropolis, but it's not a very tall city with like high skyscrapers that go up into the air. Instead, it's kind of a flat city, but then the skyscrapers go under the ground and there's kind of like endless corridors and endless uh, skyscrapers that are all connected by these long like hallways and stuff. These It almost feels like a giant submarine kind of with all these tunnels that connect all of these buildings. Um, and you're going to see Kong Chiam. You're going to see what it looks like above ground. And you're going to see what it looks like underground. And uh, I'm real excited to uh, share that with you guys. But uh, uh, yeah, Kong Chiam. These are Romos. And these Romos are kind of... Um, Ah, they're really cool. They're these floating robots. They got these double like blaster guns that just kind of like doo -doo 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 kind of shoot over their head. And uh, they are, man, I make no bones about it. They are killing machines and they usually assist a red star slag warrior or sometimes they're on their own kind of uh, doing whatever, but they're controlled either by the Red Star or Slag Warriors or Lochan Shyamal. Everything kind of taps into Lochan Shyamal. He's got, uh, he's able to control the nanonet and be conscious at the same time, uh, which is this, it's this futuristic technology you'll kind of learn all about in the films. So this is the giant question mark in the film. One of the giant question marks. This character is Umi, uh, portrayed by Lindsay. You guys are going to love this character and um, uh, just uh, really mysterious on purpose. I want you guys to discover uh, this character and how cool she is. This is the Grand Vizier's personal shuttle. And there's a name for the shuttle. I forget exactly what it is, but it's the Grand Vizier's shuttle. However, in this shot, who is piloting or who's inside the shuttle? I'm not going to say, but I will say it's not the Grand Vizier. I'll just I'll just throw that little nugget out there. Uh, here we go. Robert Seven Shannon uh, playing pitch. And we see him here as a hologram in a Hong Kong pub. Uh, he's actually having a chat with Aladdin. And um, so there's this interesting technology. I won't get into it too much, but there's kind of the hollow net and there's the nano net. So. The hollow net is really just like the internet, but it's holograms and you can kind of access everything kind of almost like minority report, you know, where you're kind of like touching through everything. But the nano net is where literally your brain taps in and you are under. Um, and then through the hollow net, you can kind of project yourself around and you can travel around. Now in different cities, there are different rules. So usually you have to have you see how he's kind of interlaced and he kind of looks like an old school hologram where it's not, he doesn't look like he's actually sitting there. It looks like a hologram is sitting there. So there are, um, there are rules for um, how you carry yourself in public. So everyone can tell that you're not actually a real person there. But when you're under the nano net in your mind, you actually, it, it feels like it's real. So to pitch, he feels like he's really there. And as you could imagine, people get addicted to this because they can live out their biggest fantasies and in their mind, everything feels absolutely real. So it's incredibly dangerous and um, uh, you'll learn more about it uh, in these films. It kind of it kind of ties into the story a little bit. This is a Hong Kong trooper. By the way, I should be sharing some of the cool stuff that you guys are getting in the Kickstarter. So the Hong Kong trooper, here it is right here. And everyone gets this for free if you support the Kickstarter. Change this up a little bit. 
if you support the Kickstarter, you get one of these Hong Kong Trooper minifigs. This minifigs is deluxe, deluxe, deluxe because it's a minifig like a Lego. It's not actual Lego, but it fits with all of your Lego pieces. It's a coughed block figure. Uh, they're made in China. Comes with two guns. There's another gun on the back. But look at that awesome backpack. The shoulder pads. Extra bulky. There's actually gauntlets on the wrists. There's even the kanji that you see. I mean, these are detailed, just like the Hong Kong troopers in the film. Like you can see, if you look in the photo here, you see that symbol on the uh, on the shoulder. There it is right there. If you can kind of see it, maybe up there on the shoulder. Um, and then there's extra armor pieces that snap onto the legs. This is such a cool, and there's artwork printed on the torso, on the legs, on the back, all the way around. This is an awesome deluxe figure. And the helmet opens up and inside you can see there's Jeff Norgrove. There's also a couple other actors that played the Hong Kong Trooper for several shots. Everyone gets this for free. This is a thank you gift for how awesome you guys have been with the Kickstarter campaign. Anyone backing the Kickstarter gets that minifig for free. And also it was revealed recently. This is the Aladdin minifig. He also comes in the Taj Mahal treasure. So if you back at any of the tiers, you're going to get Aladdin. And he look at, he comes with a tracking light. He comes with a blaster and he comes with this awesome satchel and he's got two different expressions. So this is his this is his kind of gritty expression, but he's got more of a smile on the other side, and uh, which is back behind his hair. So you can just turn that around, put his hair back on, and then he's got a little grin. Or is this one the grin? Oh, this one is the grin. He's being mischievous is what it is. All right. More to share. Actually, real quick, since we're talking minifigs, here's another one, Princess Kamala. And this is the second reward tier. Uh, which is Jin's wise choice. And you'll get Princess Kamala. So fun, so cool. She comes with, uh, this is one of the holograms that she uses. Uh, I can't wait, you guys. The, the, the Kickstarter is off the hook. We are just below 40K. We are about to... Uh, Hit that, and then once we do, you guys get the awesome sticker sheet as a thank you gift. Um, so real excited about that. Moving on, this is Jolly. This is Aladdin's ex-girlfriend, uh, Steve Anthony in the background, and of course, uh, Jessica Pankatai in the background. Um, but Cassidy failing, just, oh my gosh, she nailed the rage uh, that she's got here. And uh, what is she doing with this... Uh, this kind of uh, rapid fire blaster. You're just going to have to watch the film to find out. You must throw me. What is the sticker sheet? Uh, great question. I don't know if I have it on this, but we showed the sticker sheet um, on the live stream lounge last Sunday. I should, I should pull up that comment. Uh, so Christy just asked, what is the sticker sheet? It is the next thank you gift. As soon as we hit 40 K Everyone is going to get this really cool sticker sheet. There's 13 stickers on the sheet. I'll be sharing it soon, um, as soon as we hit 40K, so you guys can see it. But if you want to see it, check out the last live stream lounge that was last Sunday. Uh, you can find it on my Facebook. You can find it on my YouTube channel. And uh, towards the end of the show, I revealed the new sticker sheet. There's a Princess Kamala sticker. There's an Aladdin sticker, a Fiji sticker. Taj Mahal sticker. Um, it's really, really cool. It's a giant seven by 10 sheet and you get all of these really cool peel stickers. You can put them on your laptop. You can put them on your phone. You can put them on your sketchbook. Um, super cool. You must throw me the lamp at once. So you've probably heard in some of the awesome trailer reaction videos, a lot of people commenting about this. So what this is, this is not a funny part of the movie. It's actually a very serious part of the movie. But the reason why it's we kind of get a chuckle out of it is because 
when we had been promoting uh, this early on at the Star Wars celebration and also at uh, Full Sail University, we had a presentation there. We had a sizzle reel, which was kind of like it wasn't an actual movie trailer, but it was kind of like a trailer. And there was a part of the sizzle that had similar. It actually had the same music building up. And then right after the guns, you know, it cut to this shot where you must throw me the lamp at once. And anyway, at the Star Wars celebration shows, uh, we had a number of these where we would play this and this sizzle reel would come up once every 10 minutes. So once every 10 minutes, you would hear this music, you know, cell dweller rocking out and it would get to that point. And because after five days, and this was multiple times that this happened, but over this like huge extended weekend, five days of every 10 minutes hearing, you must throw me the lamp at once. What was so funny is everyone working back behind the booth, cast and crew, you know, cast would be signing posters and I'm over, I had like Star Wars stuff going on, like doing uh, sketches and signing books and everything, but it never failed. We would be talking to people. People are interested in the movie. Hey, yeah. So, you know, parts Matt filmed in, in China and in India. And then we had a soundstage in Clinton Township, Michigan, but without missing a beat, as soon as it got to that, that point, Everyone would just stop what they were doing. Like if they were talking to someone or anything, we would just stop mid sentence and we would all shout out, you must throw me the lamp at once. But then we would go right back to our conversation. And it was just the funniest thing that without missing a beat, we would all do it over and over and over again. So to us, it's this really funny thing. So we're trying to get it to be this. It would be great if somehow it becomes this meme. Maybe it should be a shirt. Uh, just an awesome sound bite that I think, uh, I think we need to make happen with the internet somehow. That would be fun. All right. There is, that's actually my dad in the background with that black and, and like the, he's got this mask that's red and it's like white on the bottom. Uh, and there's Jessica Pankatai in the background, but, uh, this is a Hong Kong trooper slamming Aladdin down on this giant steel drum. And, uh, again, the cool thing is if you, if you back the Kickstarter at any reward tier, even if it's the smallest one, you're going to get, oh my gosh, the official collector's edition souvenir book. You're getting a Fiji enamel pin designed by Deanna Sheehan. You are getting um, a shirt of your choice. There's so many cool things you're going to get, but already this spring, you are going to get the Aladdin minifig, which comes in that reward tier anyway. And you're getting now the thank you gift. The first thank you gift is this Hong Kong trooper. You're going to have these right away to play with, uh, to build, because all the pieces are separate, like in these cool little bags. It's it's actually really fun. I have had so much fun putting these little, uh, the prototypes for these together. But what's great is already you can reenact some of these scenes of uh, these two duking it out. And there's multiple uh, Hong Kong troopers running around, but uh, there's uh, there's one in particular here where there's kind of an epic showdown with uh, Aladdin and this Hong Kong trooper. Uh, this is Aladdin rolling around. Uh, again, uh, Eric was so amazing. Uh, just everything that he, he that he went through, he never said no to anything that we wanted to do. Uh, it, he was just fantastic. This here is Umi, and this is uh, Lindsay, and she is a martial arts expert. She actually won a few years back Martial Artist of the Year, and uh, this is Dave Todd, who's getting kicked in the face, and uh, he's holding a laser, um, kind of like a laser rifle there. And um, I believe Lindsay is holding on to uh, Daniel Khalil, DK, um, who, uh, and these are klepto runners uh, who uh, you are going to see in the film. But uh, there is just some really, really cool, if you're into martial arts fighting, um, I mean, I wouldn't call these martial arts films if I had to pick a genre. It's kind of hard because these films are almost like, um, Indiana Jones or something like that, where it's it's just hard to define. So I guess maybe adventure, action. 
And even calling these sci-fi, I mean, they're sci-fi because there's lots of robots and ships flying around, but they're they're also, you could call them fantasy because of the mysticism that's kind of, uh, but it's, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't define it as that either. These films are really funny. Um, they're intense. There's a lot of action. Um, so it's kind of hard if you had to pick one thing, um, but one thing that it does have uh, some really cool, uh, it has awesome martial arts fighting. I think you guys are going to be impressed with uh, with what you see. And of course, the Romanelli's School of Martial Arts, very instrumental in helping uh, choreograph uh, a lot of the fighting that you see. Here are two of the bounty hunters. This is James Polony and Cam Turner. And the name of these bounty hunters, if you're interested, although it, they're not really, uh, you don't really hear their names in the film, but this is Nico Dada and Shropka. And uh, it's probably not spoiling too much saying that they are on the hunt for Aladdin. All right, this is John Rick who plays Bredge. And there's, there is more Bredge in the film. Uh, he's definitely a major character throughout the trilogy. Um, but we didn't show too much of Bredge, and part of it is because you see more of him in the second half. And again, designing this trailer, I didn't want to reveal too much of the film. Um, I, I wanted, uh, I really wanted, um, I want you guys to discover a lot of this. This is a, who you see right now, this, um, of course, there's Fiji and Aladdin in the background. This is Aladdin's apartment that he kind of makes out of a giant storage container that's in a building. So he's not homeless, but he's kind of off the radar and he's kind of made this man cave in this uh, inside of this deserted building. This is kind of where he hides out. But the hologram princess that you see is Space Kitty Lex and uh, just a, a very beautiful model. She was really fun to work with. Um, and uh, yeah, this is Aladdin and this is Shropka, Cam Turner, uh, grabbing Aladdin by the throat and lifting him in the air. Uh, this is, uh, this is just fantastic. Um, I love it. And, uh, in the background, uh, there is Terry Steele, I believe David Kasawa, uh, Alex Bouchel, um, uh, there's James Polony. I can see John Rick's foot and a number of other extras in the background. There's also people that are behind the camera right now. There's kind of a lot of bystanders that are watching this, uh, that are watching all of this go down. How is Aladdin going to get out of this one? All right. The Gin of Wisdom, uh, the title card at the end. This was actually the first day of filming with Fiji. And uh, what was interesting about this is literally down to the wire, the night before we were in Mears, Michigan, we already had been filming uh, the day before a scene that's in the second film. Then this was the first day filming with Fiji. Literally the night before I was painting and taping up Fiji's stripes on, because uh, we had just finished building this mechanical puppet. So I was doing this up north, finishing Fiji, and then the morning before we filmed, I needed to uh, do the um, kind of the, what's it called, where you're just trying to make it look scraped and used and like Fiji's been through some battle action. So the technique that I used was taking chrome paint, spray paint, and I would kind of spray it in this little thing, and I would use a toothbrush to... Uh, to kind of just scrape and hit edges. And it's a technique, you can kind of see it here on this uh, gun. And it kind of just makes it look weathered and battered. And um, and it just gives it this really cool, you know, they do this in the, uh, um, gosh, there's a name for this technique. It's escaping me right now. But um, it's just a really cool way to make things look like uh, they're real and they've been used. Anyway, so what happened, I forgot to bring chrome spray paint. And I forgot to bring an extra toothbrush to do this. So literally, uh, and we're in the middle of nowhere uh, over on the other side of Michigan in Mears, Michigan, near the Silver Lake Sand Dunes. So I needed a Home Depot. The nearest Home Depot was an hour north in Ludington, Michigan. So I had to get up at like four in the morning. I had to get a bunch of other stuff together. Then I had to drive 
to this Home Depot. I waited in the parking lot for it to open, bought the um, bought the spray paint. They didn't have toothbrushes. So then I went to a gas station, bought a toothbrush, came back literally that morning, painted and detailed all around Fiji. And then hours later, we were filming this right here. Um, there's actually some cool behind the scenes. Uh, there's a behind the scenes video of what we filmed that day and how we did that uh, Rashmi access port. Can't wait to share that with you. And of course, we have Aladdin at the end covered in radioactive goo, uh, whatever this is. Uh, it is uh, it is nasty. And believe it or not, uh, as much as this probably was not the funnest of days for Eric Steele, this is actually not the grossest thing that we had to put him through, not just for the entire trilogy, even this first film, there are, there are grosser things that happen to Aladdin. We really drag him. Uh, we put him through the ringer and drag him through the mud. But what was important to me is I really, uh, you know, I think anytime in a film like an Indiana Jones film or even a James Bond film, I think a lot of times when you have contrast with locations, um, you know, even in a film like The Empire Strikes Back, you've got Dagobah, which is really gross. And then you've got Cloud City, which is this beautiful palace in the clouds. Actually, very similar to uh, Aladdin 3477, where the Taj Mahal is a palace that kind of floats among the clouds. And then Aladdin is in the gutter and he is uh, he's a down and out con artist. And he definitely um, luck has not been on his his side. So um, it's kind of great to see the contrast of worlds. Uh, again, an adventure that takes place all over Asia. And uh, if you guys dig the trailer, I, I think you guys are going to dig the film's faux show. What up? What's going on? Um, yeah, feel free to leave comments. So I got just a couple other things I wanted to talk about because... Have you guys seen the Recreate My Trailer contest? So everyone has seen the trailer, but I think some of you may have missed out, especially my creative friends, the Recreate My Trailer contest. You still have uh, uh, about three and a half weeks to jump on this, recreating the trailer using any creative means necessary. Stop motion animation. You could redraw the panels as comic book images you could recreate the images as memes. You can use the audio. There's actually a link on the YouTube video in the description where you can download the audio as is. There's also the three tracks licensed by Fixed Music. They're all Cell Dweller tracks. You can download those as well. You can only use them for contest use, but if you wanted to remix the music or re-edit them into your own trailer, you're welcome to do that. You could recut the trailer like download the trailer, reassemble the shots. You could use additional shots from the Kickstarter video where there's tons of shots there. So many cool things you can do. So definitely check out the Recreate My Trailer. The grand prize is two grand. And uh, there are also money prizes for second and third place winners. First, second, and third get uh, fixed music gift cards. Plus there's cool Aladdin 3477 swag. Check it out. Um, it's a really fun contest. Uh, so I'm anxious to see what you guys do. There is a Kickstarter going on right now. I've already talked about the mini figs, but I also should share this guy right here. This is the first Fiji. Let me bring this up a little bit larger and in charger right here. This is Fiji and this is the standard Fiji. This is a Fiji designer toy. And this thing is so detailed. It's so cool. The lighting is a little strong here, so it's kind of hard to see. Look at that detail. It's incredible. And then the back jet pack. Whoops, I keep turning the wrong way. And then Aladdin 3477. Love this cat. You can get these through the Kickstarter and there's actually six different versions of Fiji. And this is the standard version. Most people are going to get this one, but it comes in a blind box. You never know which one you're going to get. Um, 
but there's six different ones. I'm going to reveal the next Fiji on the next live stream lounge coming up this Sunday. So be sure to tune in for that. So uh, here's a look at the Taj Mahal treasure. Again, this is the uh, this is the first reward tier. But, and I know it seems like jumping in, man, $45 just to jump in. Remember, Kickstarter is not a charity. You're not just giving us money. You're getting rewards. You get this stuff for pledging. So for $45, this is just the first swag box. It's going to come this spring to your front door. You're getting a 96-page full-color book that shows awesome images and cool behind-the-scenes and shows a close look at the characters from the film. You're going to get that. You're going to get the Aladdin minifig. You're going to get a Fiji enamel pin that has um, uh, sparkle orange eyes. They look amazing. I'm actually going to be sharing what the Fiji uh, enamel pin looks like soon. There are five different t-shirt designs. You get to choose which t-shirt, what size you want. There's actually four more secret items you are going to get in this swag box plus already for the thank you gift you get this hong kong trooper minifig for free you're gonna get the sticker sheet as soon as we pass 40k we're literally 200 i believe 245 dollars away from hitting 40k so it's gonna happen hopefully soon we've been like teetering uh for so long but as soon as we hit that this awesome sticker sheet Plus, there's the four more secret items. And this is just reward tier number one. There's going to be more thank you gifts. There's add-ons that you can add to this reward tier. And then you can obviously get higher reward tiers so that you get swag boxes filled with cool stuff all year round. Um, a quick look. Here's Jin's Wise Choice. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one because we already revealed the movie poster. So we know what that looks like. But um, Fiji Patch, Glow in the Dark silicone wristband they glow awesome too there's uh the side packaging of the fiji designer toy snapback hat there's the uh six fidgies uh starting this sunday we are gonna reveal a new fiji each week so you can see what the rest of those look like there's an opportunity to get personal thank you videos we're gonna start filming those soon um Glossy 8x10s, opportunities to get more shirts. Um, and of course, the red carpet experience. So this is super cool. This is um, an opportunity where you can see the film before anyone else with me this spring. And this was part of the executive producer tier, which is sold out. But there's one more opportunity that you can get. These are limited as well. And they are, they're going quick. They're not sold out yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they will be uh, before the campaign's over. So if you want this, um, it's you and a plus one. I had some friends that did something pretty smart. Two friends that wanted to do this with their plus ones, but they were like 500, man. So they actually banded together. So they got it together so that they're each other's plus one. And so they're going to see the film before anyone else with me in my own personal theater. This is a really great place to see it because this is where I would show uh, dailies to uh, cast and crew, but also this is where I did my final sound mastering and color. And um, uh, if there was ever a place to see it, uh, it would be here. And it's like a fun, it's a fun evening. So uh, definitely consider that. All right, that is me breaking down the trailer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, uh, it's been, uh, it's been fun sharing it with you guys. Good luck with the movie, Matt. Uh, thank you. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to share more new stuff dropping all the time. Thank you again. We are, uh, by the time this video is done, I'm pretty sure we are going to be past 400 K 400,000 views. The official trailer on YouTube. Wow. And then I just hit 10k subscribers. So it's uh it's just uh it's just amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, Christy, I love you too. I can't wait for everyone to uh to just see how incredible uh your acting 
is just awesome in these films. You really brought the princess to life. Th uh, life. Thank you, Chantel. Um, all right, I'm out of here. Thank you for taking a look at the uh, uh, at the official trailer, me breaking it down. I can't wait for you guys to see more. Check out the Kickstarter. It gets updated every day with new stuff. So if you checked it out the first day, I guarantee if you go there now, it's going to look a lot different. And, uh, and check it out. Um, I can't wait to share more with you. There's still a lot coming. We're not even halfway through the campaign. Uh, we're getting close to halfway and lots more exciting things to share with you guys. All right, Matt out. <laughs>